It's Sunday the 16th of June 2019. This is an update for all the Australian gold stocks. I'll run through quite a few of them. Uh, there's been a few interesting events in the last last six weeks or so. Most notably was um, the massive uh, miss from Dacian Gold that's really destroyed the share price. Um, you know, this, this hurt a lot of people, including myself, and I think the, you know, the, this really sort of shakes the faith of people in investing in this in this um, sector, and you know it's I've got the uh, there's not the chart doesn't really tell you much here. It's all about the of the fundamentals in the announcement. Obviously, um, I think what frustrates me most here is that I, I saw the signs coming and didn't act on them uh, probably as much as I should have. But the you know I think the main thing here is obviously the, the what what they're downgrading the quarterly guidance, which is kind of a a miss that would have been, you know, that the share price would have got hit on that alone. But obviously, then they've downgraded um, production guidance going forward for the rest of the mine plan, effectively. Uh, and this this highlighted a couple of key sentences here. And I did was writing a few things about this prior. They they kept writing this uh, this 98% grey control to mill reconciliation. Um, that wasn't really the issue that was emerging. I could see in the last quarterly, in particular, that this. It was really about the ore reserve to uh, rec ore reserve to production reconciliation that was the issue, which is effectively the grade whether the grade is actually in the ground, and obviously that's now they're saying that it isn't. So that's um, why they've had to downgrade ongoing production from sort of the 180 to 220 sort of region, I think, to now this 150 to 170, and costs have obviously increased in line with that as well. So now they're sort of targeting this 1350 to 1450 which obviously makes the mine um, much more marginal. So, you know, the, st the stock's been absolutely caned here, and it's um, I think the market cap's down to $100 million at this price. They do have um, $120 million in debt still, $20 million, I think, of which is due this this quarter, and they had, they had $70 million in, in cash. So I, I'm not sure, uh, despite all that bad news, I'm not sure how much of, uh, you know, this is obviously pricing for either bankruptcy or a capital raising at a very low price. Uh, they also talked about, I had it highlighted in there, a change of control transaction. You know, companies always say that sort of stuff. Uh, but I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I have no doubt they probably are pursuing that. Uh, but that's probably seen by the market as another sign of weakness that they'll have to raise more money. Um, but I'm, I'm sort of, uh, I think maybe there's a potential that they've kind of gone the other way here, they've always been overestimating their forecast for quite some time now, uh, and now I think they've kind of basically said we're not going to be able to achieve anything uh, more than we have, which I don't think is is kind of going it's kind of going the other way. Now they're they're basically underestimating what the potential is if they if they are able to optimize the mine plan a little bit further. Uh, they they're still moving into the higher grade area and Allensons. So I haven't bought any more shares and I won't be buying any for a long time yet uh, until I see what's in that mine plan update. But I think there is a potential that they've kind of gone the other way uh, in underestimating the potential of what could be achieved here if some of the operational problems could be ironed out and if the grade in some of the other mine areas is not as bad, as uh, not as underperforming as it has been in the first couple of underground declines. So um, it's obviously been a, a train wreck and, you know, it shakes the faith in the, in the sector along with, you know, a couple of days before this was the uh, announcement of administration for Gascoigne, uh, a stock that I owned probably 18 months ago. And I saw the signs there when it started going bad and got out along probably in the 30, 40 cent range when I just didn't see it, didn't seem right. Um, but Dacian's always seemed like it would be a, a better performing operation. Um so, you know, I'm sceptical here that they can ever recover, but uh, it will all depend on uh, their ability to not not dilute the share price at this low price. Uh, we do have Australian dollar gold at 19.50, so even if they can produce at 14.50, still making relatively good margins there, and I think can probably pay down their debts, you know, but there won't be a lot left for the uh, for shareholders. So in a rising gold price environment, there's still potential debt for this company to go somewhere. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a while yet. And I think everyone will be waiting for that new mine plan. So that's obviously been the main main story in the market as well. Um, St. Barbara had another sort of bad couple of weeks uh, since the last um, last video I did. They obviously had the bad news at Gualia and then compounded it with, well, not compounded it, but then they've had this announcement of the acquisition of 
Atlantic Gold in Canada, and that you know that was a probably a poorly timed announcement given their their share price had really been pummeled in the you know only three or four weeks before that. Um, you know I think they've probably overpaid for that mine. They've kind of got a little bit, little bit desperate to, for another asset to diversify their production base. So you know that's um, and now they've had to dilute at fairly you know lower price, much lower prices than they were you know six or 12 months ago, uh, it's really what you don't want to do. Um, so I think they, they've probably bought a good asset there, but they've paid too much and that's whacked the share price. And then they've, you know, they're really underperforming in a market where most of the gold stocks are doing quite well. So um, I, I warned about, I've been warning about that for, for um, months in that, that St. Barbara was a stock that had, had the need to buy someone. And I was concerned that I didn't want to buy their stock in case they did a, a uh, Share for share issue, and um, and that's exactly what's happened. They've really they've and they've done it after that uh, that Gualia bad news, which has massively um, affected you know massively had a big effect compared to what it would even if they had done it without the Gualia news. Um, so that's that's obviously a, a bad one and another company that's going to underperform the sector I think going forward. Um, evolution and Evolutions had a, had a very good run in the last couple of months, um, back up toward the the all time highs again at this 413. I think it was that it almost is an all time high weekly close there. I think so. It is um, has done really well. You know, I, I, again, I think we're getting into sort of overvalued territory here potentially. And there is, um, you know, these stocks, it's all the money's going to the same stocks, and that that's a bit of a warning sign. These companies are, are mature now, and they need they need new uh, new mines and, and their costs are gradually rising. Um, Evolution was my pick. Evolution and Saracen were my picks probably a couple of months ago when we had this this move down in both of them. Um, you know, that's just been the trend that the money's been going to the top. Um, so I'll put up the Saracen chart as well. I, I missed out on this one. I tried to get in there at um, when I had this dip toward that sort of 250, 260 and I missed out and obviously it's been the best, probably the best performer in the in the mid larger caps for the last uh, last two months, so it's sort of up almost up forty percent from those um, those lows around two fifty two sixty, but again looking looking fairly stretched. I noticed they did an acquisition last uh, last Friday I think or maybe on Thursday of a, of a smaller miner, a smaller deposit uh, nearby to Thunderbox, which is right sort of move and adding sort of incremental production, buying cheap ounces relative to their own. They're buying it with um, with stock mainly, so that's I expect to see more and more of that. These companies with quite uh, elevated share prices will use that to buy the the lower, uh, so buy buy more ounces in production of juniors. Northern Stars done uh, also up at all time highs. I think above ten bucks. Uh, I think there's significant risk here in the Northern Star share price. You know that. I'm always focused on those production reports because we know that they uh, they have the potential to whack these stocks. Northern Star needs to perform at Pogo. They've sort of had two bad quarters, and I think they've kind of promised that this is um, that things are turning around. But another bad quarter there, and you could see the share price move down. And I think at 10.50, with a rising cost profile and and potential production problems, it's uh, it's it's very overdone here, uh, and I'd be I'd be cautious owning it. Um, and I, I think it's it's kind of weakening. This chart's an, always an interesting one for me. It has obeyed these trend lines quite well, and we're heading toward that sort of what has historically been a bit of a a um, resistance zone in this this sort of upward trend line here. So that's one I, I I think it's an avoid at this point, and I don't think um, I think there's more more downside than upside at the moment. And if you want to, I think it playing those Australian that Australian dollar gold price. Um, there might be safer ways to do it than in, in Northern Star stock. Perseus is one that's uh, you know closed relatively well at 50 cents, sort of been sluggishly performing. I think some of that was down to the uh, warrant conversion they had at 45 cents. That was a, only a few weeks ago. Uh, maybe and that was underwritten that conversion as well. So maybe the uh, underwriter has been dumping their stock in for, sort of in this uh, 45 to 50 cent range to make that quick profit. Uh, I don't know how long that can last, but I wouldn't have thought too much longer. And they you know, they've got a reasonably stable production profile at the moment, and they've uh, building their new mine. So 
I think they're probably a good, a, a relatively safe place at the moment, um, which is not something normally happens with Perseus. The other one in the same boat and sort of with a development, a development story, I guess, and uh, those relatively high US dollar costs is uh, Resolute. And I don't own Resolute and I haven't um, all of this year. I think I sold, I think I bought in and then decided it was not, not worth the risk. Um, probably bought it actually at the start of the year and sold them fairly quickly afterward. The, I just, you know, they seem to be burning a lot of cash on development here. Um, their Australian asset at Ravenswood's a bit questionable. Uh, they, they're locking in a lot of hedges here, which makes me think, you know, they need that. To, they're worried about their profitability. Um, so I think they, they locked in hedges in US dollar gold and Australian dollar gold production terms. So that's, I'm, I'm, I think that's an avoid at this point, and I think there's a potential for, uh, you know, another miss if they, when we get the production update in the next few weeks. So that's that's one. I think they've been saved by the oxide production they had, uh, you know, really good oxide production result the last couple of quarters, but that's not going to be there um, this quarter, I don't think. So there's a potential that if the underground is still slower to perform, that uh, the share price gets whacked. So I think the safer places to be. Uh, some of the other mid caps or s small to mid caps, but rapidly sort of becoming mid caps are Remelius and Silver Lake. Uh, Remelius been in a trading hop for the last couple of days. I think with their an announcement about the um, the plan for their the Tampia deposit that they bought from um, Explorum a few months ago. That's likely to be positive. I would have thought for the share price, especially since they've been in a trading hop when. A lot of the other stocks move sort of 8 to 10% on Thursday and Friday. So there might be a bit of a catch up there. Um, so I, I expect they're, you know, they're a reasonable, reasonably good operator. Stocks a little bit overdone here again, but probably uh, can see a bit of a bid higher compared to some of those. I'd probably be more inclined to own something like, like Remelius at this point than Northern Star um, from a risk reward point of view. I think there's probably less risk in Remelius at the moment versus Northern, Northern Star. Silver Lake as well, probably, you know, that's always been the, the brother of Remelius probably for the last three or four years. Uh, again, closing in on sort of a five-year high, not an all-time high for this one, you know, many people own this back at $3, $4 uh, back in the day, but it's been a pretty pretty steady move up. Uh, I can't remember what the market cap is here, but since the Doré acquisition, they're probably trading at a market cap of sort of $700 million here, which is getting pretty elevated. Um, fairly high-cost operator. When I look at something like Dacian, and I see I see how Silver Lake's been able to sort of turn around, it is possible um, that Dacian can kind of survive and and uh, revive itself if it's able to sort of maintain that shareholder base, that's that um, share issues, and um, not have to dilute significantly at the bottom here. So you know Silver Lake's done reasonably well, and they they might be a buyer of the, that uh, Dacian asset at Mount Morgan's as well. Um, Another one that a couple of people asked me about is um, Aurelia um, AMI. And this is a stock that I, I bought it on the, the uptrend last year and sold it for sort of a 10% gain. Sort of not for this, not for, you know, in the 60 to 70 sort of region. And obviously it had another move after that. The thing that concerned me here was um, this is a, sort of a lesson in looking at the mine plan and, and how that drives profitability. as particularly with, with underground mines with extremely high grade areas. It was always obvious that the the high grade was going to run out. Um, that was what was really um, fueling this run here. They were making massive margins on that. Um, I think it was a Chronos zone um, for a few a few quarters last year, and then and there was also a lot of this uh, a lot of corporate sort of distribution of shares. Um, we had the they were added into the um, GDXJ index as well, which was this big volume here which marked almost the, the perfect uh, top as it tends to. Uh, and then since then, it's obviously been, it's halved almost from the, from the highs. Uh, so you know, just another lesson to be aware of, just following the mine plan and how that's going to change the profitability outlook over a certain period. Uh, it was obvious that that was not going to be able to main be maintained and anything they say that it is, uh, until you see, you know, they put those ounces in reserves and they're... Um, you know, it was a it was a high grade zone for a for a short period. So you can't you can't extrapolate for short bursts of uh, hyper profitability 
I guess, is the lesson. Um, so you really need to be looking at understanding the mine plan and how that's driving production and not looking at the profitability figures or the all in sustaining costs, because obviously the all in sustaining costs are a function of grade in particular. Uh, so if the grade's not there, their costs are going to go up significantly. And the CEO resigning um, a few months ago was probably another sign that there's, you know, that I think there's corporate issues there. You know, he's disagreement with the board potentially about the um, an acquisition of the CSA mine, I think it was, from Glencore. You know, all of that sort of stuff is kind of warning signs. But predominantly, it, I look at the mine, the mine plan as the thing that you're going to be able to look at to really forecast if these if that risk reward is not there. And it, it wasn't for me in... Um, Aurelia stock a few months ago when I was sort of in there, but I haven't, I haven't traded it. And it's, it's very, it seems to be quite a popular one with traders. I'm not sure why that is had extremely good volume for the last probably uh, nine months. So it was quite a, quite a hyped stock, which was um, kind of strange to me because it, you know, it sort of emerged from obscurity, I guess, maybe six to nine months ago to a lot of the market. Um, some of the high costs plays and development plays echo, uh, had a you know been trending down. Obviously, they've done a a, um, a raising a share purchase plan at this at 13 cents. Um, I got my allocation in that, and I'm I'm re- relatively happy to sit there and wait for their drilling. I think they they're probably going to hit some reasonable drill results, and and with a rising Australian dollar gold price, they're probably the the pick to um, to trade that. And it tends to be a fairly good trading stock and trend quite well. So it wouldn't surprise me for this to kind of take off fairly quickly. On some decent drill results, so that's why I'm kind of holding it. Um, you know, I, I, it's bad that they had to dilute at that low prices again, but it's just a they got to a they're kind of at the mercy of uh, Northern Star being their largest shareholder, and of um, they, but they did a decent raising, so they're not going to need to raise money for quite some time. So this is kind of their, I guess, their last chance to really uh, fill the back end of that mine plan and get some decent um, decent ounces into reserves. So I still like those, and I think they've they've got you know in that in a six month kind of three to six month time frame they've probably got the best potential of of any of these kind of uh, near term development stories. Capricorn's the other one, you know they've they've turned it down the last couple of a uh, couple of weeks. Um, doesn't get a lot of attention. Trades kind of by appointment. It's trading you know maybe thirty forty thousand dollars a day here, so not a lot not a lot of action. Um, Still think that um, actually I forgot to do the the Regis chart. I still think they might be a target for Regis. Regis is uh, has kind of been underperforming some of those other bigger bigger mid tier companies for the last few weeks. Uh, you know, obviously hasn't seen the same sort of bounce as something like um, Evolution or Saracen. So there are kind of underlying issues for me. You can see there I didn't hadn't seen this. It's actually bounced off really nicely off that uh, trend, that long term trend line since the lows in 2014 15. Um, and I've, I've, I think this might be related to their their McPhillamy's deposit in New South Wales. I don't. That mine seems like it might never happen. It's been they bought that years ago. Uh, I think they bought it from Alkane maybe 2012, 2013, and uh, they haven't been able to develop. But they had water problems. They're having sort of a lot of community engagement meetings. I mean that's common for these companies to have these community meetings and stuff. But it seems like the um, politically, the, the, they might be a bit on the nose at the moment. And New, New South Wales is, has always been a difficult jurisdiction for mining um, in the last, you know, sort of decade or so. There's a lot of issues there, and there's a lot of problems with water. So I think I can see it not happening at all, um, which was kind of their, that was their growth asset. And they did make that bid for Capricorn, which kind of gives the suggestion that maybe Regis management thinks that... Um, McPhillamy's might not happen for quite some time. I think even their optimistic forecast is saying three years at this point from production. So that's that's a long way away, and they need something to fill that um, fill their production profile with sort of a again they have that kind of gradually rising costs uh, base in in their uh, WA mines. So that's I think they're going to have to move. Some of these companies will use their stock. Uh, so if we keep seeing the Australian dollar gold price rally, we see Regis rally back to say five fifty or six bucks. I think they will use that that hefty uh, stock price, but they've got to do it. They've got to time it around their operational updates to make sure that they're not uh, they don't deliver a bad quarter or two or have some sort of major problems like St. Barbara and and have to dilute. Um, you know, but even something like Capricorn is pretty is pretty small fry for um, for Regis. I think you know Regis is a a two and a half billion dollar market cap company and Capricorn's 
even if they paid 150 million for it, it's not going to not going to do much long-term damage to their share structure. Uh, the other two sort of uh, long-term favourites of uh, of mine, uh, WAF West African Resources, making good progress at their their deposit uh, their their development project Sambrado. I think they're um, we'll gradually see more buying. You know, I've said that for a while here, but it's it's still what the best quality development asset you're going to find on the ASX at the moment. It is in Burkina Faso, but you know, I don't think the I think that will eventually just the quality will shine there. Uh, they delivered some good um, infill uh, drill results last week. Saw a bit of a burst for the share price and then immediately sold down. There's not a lot of interest here. I don't know why. Like I think it's mainly probably that the that if you know if the stock was based in Australia, the, the market cap would probably be two to three times higher. Um, people are not don't want to invest in these West African stocks. They're on the nose. But with a rising gold profile, rising gold price, and again, like I. I I can't stress enough that it, these mid-tier companies with um, rising share prices need to fill their um, production profiles going forward. They're going to use stock price, their stock to do that. If if you know if the larger ASX companies are going up 40, 50 percent, and these bigger uh, these bigger development projects are only moving 10 or 20, there's obviously a huge opportunity for them to use their stock to um, to buy these companies. And it serves, it helps everyone really, and that's that's a natural sort of uh, cycle in the gold sector. And I think it's really heating up now with the gold price looking poised to break through that sort of 1350. And that will be the, I think that'll be the cue. Uh, if we can see sustained move above 1350, these companies will start to think, okay, this is the time we can get a bit more aggressive, uh, probably have a bit more on our, a bit more of the sort of investment community on our side. I'm talking about sort of probably US. Uh, gold producers here in particular, I think, are the ones who would buy these West African stocks. Uh, Cardinals, be you know, probably underperforming again. Very little interest in this company. Extremely illiquid. Had a huge uh, cross trade there a few weeks ago. Um, well, 10 million shares, so about I think 3% of the register. Uh, didn't see any substantial holder, uh, holder notice there. I think there might be a, tr- a few sort of trap funds in some of these stocks dealing with redemptions. Um, I still think Cardinal eventually gets taken out. Their projects seems on track. Um, they might be solving some of the metallurgy issues as well. Uh, well, not solving, but I think gradually um, making the metallurgy, med- metallurgical recoveries better. Um, you know, that was obviously the thing that sunk the stock in, in 2016. So I think they're gradually uh, overcoming that and their um, definition study will come out in the next couple of months, and I expect that to deliver pretty much the same results as the the PFS, but with improved metallurgical recovery, and that should help the um, the net present value sort of calcs. And um, obviously, they've still got gold fields as their substantial holder with sort of 15 to 20 percent fully diluted, so that they're they're not moving anywhere, and I expect that they they will. Um, be interested in this company. I don't think they're sitting there as a passive investor, but they have got it. They've got the company um, by the balls, so to speak, that they can they can kind of wait them out, and they know that there's there's all this stuff with redemptions and whatever, and and people who are stale holders who want to exit into a very illiquid stock that pushes the share price down. So Goldfields and and the like and those sort of companies are no in no hurry to to buy these uh, development projects at the moment. But there'll be a moment. There'll be kind of a I think there's an opportunity here before the market catches on. If the gold price goes above 1400, I expect companies like WAF and Cardinal will start to rally. But the share prices of the uh, acquiring companies will rally first, and in that sort of uh, gap there, that's potentially when they'll they'll make a move on some of these development projects and and use their their st- the, the sort of stock valuation gap, I guess, to uh, to make a move. So that's pretty much all I'm following on the ASX at the moment. Um, obviously, that DCN was the big story and kind of a, a kick in the guts to a lot of people and, and sort of denting confidence in the sector again after some of the other failures of the past um, couple of years in this in the Western Australian gold sector in particular. But uh, it just highlights the difficulty in this industry and, um, you know, you've really got to be on the lookout for these problems and uh, as much as you can anyway. When you when you when When management really doesn't, uh, stretches the truth a bit and waits till you know they've kind of completely changed their mind. It, it really knocks everyone out of the sector, and that it sort of 
causes people to reevaluate and potentially move their money elsewhere. But I'm also aware that when you see that sort of stuff and everyone's dis disengaged with the sector and wants out, that's often marks the bottom. And I think that's where we are in some of these smaller development exploration plays. That maybe there's still ex extremely good opportunities here. And just when the macro environment is turning, um, there's probably some, some very good uh, potential to make some good money here. So that's what I'm following. Uh, put up the other video on the, uh, the gold price and some of the macro stuff as well, if you want to have a look at that. Thanks.